Welcome to the first week of a seven week series on healing your chakra centers. We're gonna first discuss the root chakra. This is all about finding your balance, your safety and your security needs. We're gonna talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the toroidal field, and work on building an understanding of how chakra centers work and govern the function of your organs. First, we need to discuss what the root chakra is and understand how does it relate to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's needs pyramid is based on the assumptions that certain physical and physiological needs must be met in order to ascend upwards on this scale and in order to attain an optimal state within your creative and an emotional body to move up into the sacral, which we'll discuss next week. We can compare Maslow's pyramid with the progression of the chakra systems and to see how each center impacts the functions of one another. Because everything is energy, we need to discuss the toroidal field. The toroidal field of a person is an electromagnetic field that extends outward from the body and it interacts with the earth's energy. This field can change your life in very interesting ways. Research has shown that Earth has a natural frequency called the Schumann resonance, and this frequency can be detected in the toroidal field of a person. Now this can lead to improved physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Additionally, it is believed that the toroidal field can interact with the Earth's energy in other ways, such as allowing us to better connect with our environment and with the people around us. Now, this year, very interesting things are happening and the toroidal field has been shifting upwards. The Schumann resonance has been shifting upwards and likewise, our own physical resonance has been shifting upwards. It's a really unique time to be alive. Now, Abraham Maslow is a great contributor to the field and study of psychology, and he came up with the idea that human beings have this hierarchy of needs where we have certain needs which must be met on one rung of the pyramid before we can progress upwards into the other ones. And so at the base of his pyramid are physiological needs needs such as breathing, food, water, sex, and sleep. Then we move up into the safety needs, which are composed of security, a body of employment, of having resources of morality, strong family units, strong health, and property. Maslow posits that once these needs are in place, an individual can then move up to the next rung of self-development which is the rung of loving and belonging. And so this is where we begin to understand ourselves a little bit more. And we can step into having thriving friendships, thriving relationships with the family and outstanding sexual intimacy. Now, once this rung has been attained, then we can move upward into our esteem needs. This is your center of self-esteem, of confidence, achievement, of learning how to have respect for others and respect by others. Finally, the last and final rung posited by Maslow is that of self-actualization. This is to know thyself, which is the embodiment of your own morality, your own creativity, spontaneity, your problem-solving methods, and you enter a space where you have a lack of prejudice and you have an acceptance of facts because you are the embodiment of the state of self, of the state of self-love. Therefore, you do not project anything less than that into the world. Now, similarly to the way Maslow has this hierarchy of needs listed, we can correlate these individual needs into the health and wellness of our energetic chakra centers with the root chakra being at the base 
and it needing to have these safety and security measures in place in order for us to move upward energetically into our other chakra centers so that we can expand and grow into our crown chakra being at the pinnacle of this pathway of self-actualization and enlightenment. Let's talk about the toroidal field. I put some images out for you to look at and I wanna talk about how our subtle energy centers interact with the world around us. Your toroidal field is basically what is often referred to as your aura. It originates in your heart center and believe it or not, your toroidal field or your auric field reveals what is going on energetically inside of you. It is palpable. This is a field that many people can tap into. You might often get a feeling that you don't want to be around a person or that a person who you are around makes you feel extremely calm and blissful. This is because of the energy that they are projecting out into the world is impacting you. The same way that we have this energetic field, so does the earth, our earth, or like I like to call her, Mother Gaia, is a conscious and sentient being capable of great healing when we connect to her. Now, how do we know this? Well, through the Schumann resonance. This is the sound of her frequency being emitted and creating her toroidal field or her auric presence. When we connect to her field through ours, we become one with her, part of her consciousness which connects us all as one. And when we see disarray and chaos on the earth and between one another, it is because we are acting against the natural flow of how things work in nature. Now let's talk about duality and polarity and how experiencing them leads us into understanding the power that we hold within. In order to build a better understanding of how to use adversity in order to strengthen our own level of consciousness and to access our ability to self-heal, we must first begin to understand that we have been standing in our own way. Harnessing the power of duality can be a great way to enhance your level of consciousness. However, you must first stop vilifying it in order to see the full picture. One of the best ways to do this is through mindfulness and meditation practices. To start, make sure to set aside time each day to be mindful, to get intentional and to meditate on these things. Here we talk about our intention and seeking understanding beyond our current capacity. This can help you to become aware of the duality of your thoughts, your emotions, and your experiences. By recognizing and understanding this duality, you can start to cultivate balance and harmony within yourself, leading to a calmer, more peaceful way of being, and a clear understanding that you are not your thoughts. You can also explore the duality of your environment by paying attention to the duality of nature all around us such as the cycles around you, the cycles of the days, the nights, the plants, the seasons, the tides, everything is cyclical. And when you stop to observe the cycles and you begin to understand the duality of your environment, you then open the doorway to start gaining insight into your own duality and how it impacts your level of consciousness. Okay, so we've covered some pretty important information, which should yield you some personal awareness of how certain experiences in your life have worked to shape the person that you have become and how these experiences have shaped how you may think and act in certain ways. There have been experiences in all of our lives which have caused us to adopt maladaptive behaviors which do not serve us. Behaviors, which keep us in cyclical patterns in our personal lives. So take a moment to pause and reflect and write down the things which occupy too much space in your mind. 
You must acknowledge the things that elicit the feelings of guilt, shame, and fear in order to feel them and ultimately release them to clear the chakra center of your root. Grounding is an imperative piece of healing your root chakra center. It is the process of integrating your energy center with the energy center of the earth field. Let's start learning the art of grounding by building a safe inner world for you as you learn to access your divine connection through exploration and expansion of your mind. So what are the things in your life which bring you to a sense of instability, insecurity, and fear? Go ahead and pause and take a few minutes to write things down and really think about it. Cultivating a firm foundation of health in your physical body lends to the flow of energetic support to your spiritual body, also known as your energetic chakra centers, which are meant to work together. When the energetic body leaves a state of homeostasis or balance, the physical body will manifest these conditions by way of health problems, trust issues, and a general sense of discomfort or dis-ease with your presence in this physical world. There are many grounding techniques for balancing and coming into harmony in your root chakra center. Walking barefoot on the earth is one of the most effective grounding techniques there is, and there's so much science to back this up. Yet I encourage you to do your own research. Visualization and integration with nature. When you can't make it to the outdoors, let your imagination bring you there or sit with your house plants. Your mind is a very powerful tool. You can utilize sound and light to ignite your imagination and to bring you to a place where you feel peace. You can use solfeggio frequency scales or visualize the red spinning light of your root. You can use copper. You can use grounding mats as very effective ways to connect to the earth energy. If you don't have easy access to be out in nature, there are a host of hand symbols called mudras, which can help you tap into your own personal energy centers and project it out into connecting to the earth field. You can use ceremonial or ritual bathing as a way to get grounded. Taking mineral baths, adding magnesium, Epsom salt, cedar branches, bringing in a candle and setting the mood to form a connection. Now let's talk about feelings and allowing ourselves to feel them all the way through so we can release them. We're so used to just pushing them down and holding them there. And most of our really hard feelings that we carry around for our whole lives are stored in the first three chakra centers. These are feelings that are associated with fear, shame, and guilt, which usually arise from childhood trauma and having caregivers who are trying to parent through their own trauma and we're not able to instill healthy coping mechanisms within us. Hanging on to these feelings and letting them fester has a direct influence on our ability to access prosperity and abundance in ways which create joy for us. So take a minute to write and jot the things down and think about methods you can use to release your trauma. The path to your healing is your own hero's journey. And following what feels good is a very powerful tool always at your disposal. Realizing that transforming fear into faith is your responsibility and to move toward a path to awakening your senses will ultimately change not only your perception of self, but of others. And it will lead you into embodying a higher version of yourself. Transforming your fears into faith takes a commitment to yourself, a desire to put yourself first so that you can show up not only for yourself, but for your children, your family, and your community. Finding ways to become inspired, to look your adversity in the face and say to it, thank you, you have made me stronger. Look for inspiration and stories of perseverance over struggle, 
You can use fear as a motivator to reach for higher awareness and to ask for help and guidance as you embark on your healing journey. Remember to embrace structure that works for you as you navigate your own path and try different things until you find out what works for you. There is no one size fits all approach and the answers are not out there. So dig in and be strong because healthy roots create healthy people, healthy plants, so to speak. Much love.